think it, that's a great question. The truth is that there will be many, many more opportunities and places for Australians to go to university under the government's higher education reforms through a number of means. We have a fantastic university system, uh, one, the world, one of the world's best, but it could be even better. Uh, and it's vitally important that we maintain our reputation for high quality research and teaching. What I'm trying to do with these reforms is actually remove the caps on the pre-degree -de places to have the biggest scholarship scheme in Australian history so that more students get to go to university. And the estimates are that about 120,000 more Australians will get to go to university under the government's proposal than under the Labor Party's CAPS proposal. So the great thing about Australia, which is different to the United States, is we have the Higher Education Contribution Scheme. Nobody can be denied a place at university in Australia because of their socioeconomic status, because everyone can borrow from the taxpayer and pay back on very low interest when they earn over $50,000 a year. What that's meant since the Labor Party introduced it, in fact, in 19. 88, 89, is that the number of people getting to go to university has exponentially increased, uh, regardless of people's socioeconomic status, because they can see that they can get to go to uni and they can pay it back later through the tax system. So okay. we have one of the most equitable systems in the world, and our reforms maintain hex and make it even more equitable for all those young Australians who want to do a pathways degree into uni. I'll just say one last quick thing. The Kemp Norton report found that if a a student from a low SES background did a pathways course before they did their undergraduate degree. They had a 1% dropout rate. If they didn't, they had a 24% dropout rate. Okay. I was going to quickly go back to Noah. What is it you're actually worried about? Is it the <laughs> amount of money you're going to have to pay at the end on your hex or what, yeah. what is... I just feel like when um, students, especially from um, disadvantaged backgrounds, will um, we'll look at these new reforms, that they'll be scared by them and will believe that they'll never be able to pay them back in the future no. and we'll lo they'll lose confidence in themselves. Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So right. last well, year oh, we We're going to let today. a few other people yeah. taste yeah. that pudding before Thanks. you do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brian, I'll come we, back for what can we hear from, Can we hear from Brian Schmidt? So I think the, the HEX scheme really makes it possible for students to pay back because there is no downstream risk. The problem I guess, is whether or not students will be getting good value for their education, which is going to be part of the equation. So if you have a scheme and universities charge lots of money because they can, then the question will be, will you be getting good value on that, or will you decide that it's just not worth it? That would be the downside. And so from my perspective, I, I do have concern of the value because right now we do cross-subsidize research, which is what I do, from student fees. And that is, I think, a fundamental distortion to the system that has the potential to make value poor for students if we go through and differentiate on price. On the other hand, we have the problem right now that, for example, at ANU, you do a science degree at ANU, you get taught by people like me, we have great labs, you get to do research. And we get the exact same amount of money as the weakest university in the country. So, you know, it's very difficult for us to maintain that standard when, quite frankly, we don't, you know, we don't actually get enough money back from fees as they currently are. So, quick question. Do you favour the deregulation plan or not? I favour some form of deregulation, but I think there needs to be a cap to keep prices from going out of sight because we have HEX, which is essentially a subsidy. And we have monopoly players like the ANU in Canberra if you want to do research. And so I think you need to balance no, that out. In, in this, oh, can I, I, I would hear oh, from Penny Wong. Then I'll oh, come God. to you after Thank Penny, you. Michael. Um, <clears throat> well, let's be clear for all of the fine words that Christopher just gave you. Uh, he, his, his plan is for um, deregulation, which means no limit on what universities can charge. And as you know, there's been a range of modelling put out which suggests uh, degrees up to $100,000. Uh, well, there has been, Christopher, and, and unfortunately right. um, the facts are that you're proposing a system which doesn't have accessibility and equity at its core. 
That's the problem. No, it's not uh, the and that's why so many people... That's not what's happening. That, that is why, well, that is, that is all... Yeah. Yes, and oh, that yeah. is why, yes. that is why the Senate has soundly rejected your proposition on a number of occasions and why so many people are concerned about their, the capacity of either themselves or their children getting an education because, as we know, it is the great enabler. It is the great, uh, great, great way in which we can, we can increase opportunity in this country. 190,000 more Australians went to university when Labor was in government. More Australians went to university when Labor was in government because of our reform. The Labor Party's up for a discussion about reform. We're not up for a discussion that makes university education harder to access for people like you. Now, Michael, um, one of the things...